In this presentation, the construction of a wrist spanning frame with a small external fixator will be demonstrated. The objectives of the exercise are to understand the clinical indications for the application of the small external fixator, the correct positioning of the shunt screws, and the construction of the wrist spanning frame. The most common indications for the wrist spanning construction of the small external fixator include extra articular distal radius fractures and intra articular fractures with or without other means of stabilizing the additional fragments. The instruments needed for this exercise are the compact air drive, the quick coupling, and the drive adapter with quick coupling for 4.0, 3.0 shunt screws, 4 80 mm long, 4.0, 3.0 self-drilling shunt screws with a thread length of 20 mm. Also needed are the drill sleeve assembly, which includes the handle, the drill sleeve, and the trocar. The construction of the bridging frame requires four MR safe self holding clip on clamps, two 4 mm diameter connecting rods, two MR safe self holding clip on combination clamps, and one additional 4 mm diameter connecting rod. To tighten the frame assembly, the 7 mm socket wrench and the 7 mm combination wrench are needed. For the application of a neutralization rod, two additional MR safe self holding clip on clamps and one 200 mm long, 4 mm diameter connecting rod are needed. The shunt screws in the second metacarpal can safely be placed in a 60 degree dorso radial arch. The position of the shunt screws in the radius depends on the soft tissue situation and the position of the neurovascular structures. The construction of the bridging frame will now be demonstrated. The bone model is secured in the clamp. After a stab incision is made, the drill sleeve assembly is inserted through the incision and placed directly on the bone surface. Care must be taken to avoid the superficial branch of the radial nerve. The trocar and drill sleeve are removed. The self-drilling shunt screw is inserted into the adapter. The power drive is used to advance the shunt screw through the threaded drill sleeve until the tip is anchored in the far cortex. In the clinical situation, irrigation is recommended while inserting the shunt screws. The image intensifier can be used to check the final position of the shunt screws. The tip of the self-drilling shunt screw must be anchored in the far cortex to ensure stable fixation. Penetration of the far cortex is not necessary. Once the shunt screw has been placed, it's released from the adapter and the drill sleeve is removed. The remaining shunt screws are now inserted in the same way. For best stability, spacing should be maximized and the distal shunt screw should be as close to the fracture as possible. Two shunt screws should be inserted in both the diaphysis of the radius and the metacarpal. The position of the shunt screws should be determined according to the fracture, the soft tissues, and the anatomical situation. The greater the distance between the two screws, the higher the stability of the frame. The clip-on self-holding clamps attach the two shunt screws in each main fragment to a connecting carbon fiber rod. Care should be taken to ensure that each rod has enough space around the fracture to accommodate a combination clamp. The clamp nuts are tightened, first by hand, and then with the 7 mm socket wrench. Final tightening is completed with the 7 mm combination wrench. The rod ends of the two fragments nearest the fracture are connected to a third rod using one clip-on self-holding combination clamp 
for each fragment. The nuts of the combination clamps are not yet tightened. The fracture is reduced, and the reduction is verified under image intensification. The reduction is maintained by hand, and the nuts of the combination clamps are tightened alternately. Additional stability can be provided by a neutralization rod. It is sufficient to attach the rod to one shunt screw in each main fragment. This presentation has demonstrated the positioning of the self-drilling shunt screws and the correct construction of the wrist-spanning frame.